Hello. Quick video because I've got to run to lead a meditation class. Um, this came up in one of my mastermind groups um, and actually it comes up a lot, right? So many of us have in mind this idea that once we're something, we can do something, right? <laughs> so insert whatever those somethings are for you. Once I make a lot of money, I can donate to charity. Once I'm successful, I can start this nonprofit. Once I'm um, more well connected, then I can really use that influence to make change in the world. So we have this idea, like almost all of us, in fact, I I've never really met anybody. That's not true. I've met a couple people who have no desire to create something better for the world. Um, not in a bad way, but because they view things a little bit differently. But almost everyone I talk to really wants to do something big, you know? And by big, it doesn't have to mean like worldwide. It could mean like, oh, I want to start a community program or I want to help teach kids how to golf, um, you know, whatever it is. Of course, the phone call I've been waiting for all morning comes right now. Um, so, you know, when we have this belief, this thought of like, I'll get there. Um, and once I'm there, I'll be able to do all of this big stuff. We kind of miss the point. And many of us never get there, right? Or we keep hitting the same hurdles, and so we're devastated. Like, I made this promise. I made this promise that I was going to make this money so that I could serve better. I made this promise that I'd be gifting this much money to charity. What's wrong with me? I made this promise to myself that I would be at a certain level so that I could serve people better. You know, why am I failing? And so we have this idea in our heads that we want to do something great for other people and, you know, really make an impact. And then we fail to meet it in the way that we thought we had to get it. And then we're disappointed with ourselves. So now we've broken the promise. We're not there. We're not helping other people. And we feel like, oh, my gosh, something's wrong with me. I'm just a total mess and I'm failing to live up to my potential and what I'm supposed to be in the world. And here's what I want to say. Which is, what if you've just got it wrong? You know, what if the gift is not the money you're supposed to donate? What if the gift is not the community program you're supposed to set up? What if the gift is not the service you're supposed to offer, but exactly who you are right now? What if you are the gift? And by thinking that, oh, well, I have to get this hurdle first. I have to get this amount of money first. I have to get this level of influence first. I have to get this job title first. By thinking that it's the what that you provide that's the gift instead of the who, meaning you, what if you're just totally missing the point, right? And I think many of us get stuck and we keep going through the same stupid, frustrating problems because we're not able to move on. Like if there's a God, let's put the word God in here, right? I don't believe God functions this way, but we'll use it as a good term. You can use universe, source, whatever you want. But if there is a God, and if that God, universe, source wants you to be anything and wants you to serve at the highest level, then serving isn't going to require that you reach a certain financial you know, income statement. It's not going to require that you have a certain job title. It's going to require that you show up to your best possible ability right now, right now. And so if you're waiting to do the things to serve, if you're waiting to serve because you think you want to serve through money, then you're probably getting the same crappy experience over and over and over again with money because you're missing the point. And you're going to keep getting stuck with money until you realize that serving is about you, not about what you give. And you can change this to a different context, but the money context is really big for people, right? And it's the one I hear it the most in. Well, I have to succeed so that I can, I can provide and I can give back. No, you give back by who you are. You give back by stepping into your purpose. You give back by showing up fully in the extent that you can right now, right? That doesn't have to be financial. And it doesn't have to be through influence, and it doesn't have to be through network, and it doesn't have to be anything other than all the gifts you already have, because you are the gift. You're the gift to the world. You're the gift. You know, think about these amazing leaders that we look to in the world, re religious and spiritual leaders, right? Let's look to Jesus. He was the gift. Not the money he made, not the charity he started. It was his presence his full and complete presence and willingness to do crazy, crazy shit, right? 
that even he probably walked into and was like, really, you think I can do what? Okay, here we go. Let me trust. Right? Or somebody like the Buddha. It was the Buddha's presence. It was Siddhartha's presence, his willingness, his courage to show up and stretch himself to the farthest possible capacity. Mother Teresa, that woman funneled a ton of money to Amazing Charities. Awesome. But it was her presence. It was her choice to speak and to stand for what she believed in and to help people who needed help. Really, just to help people who needed help right then, right there. You know, that's what made her a gift. Plus all the money flowed. That's what I'm saying. Like, the money's going to flow. We don't have to worry about it. Right? Not in the way that we're worrying about it now. Because we're worrying about it now as a way to stop ourselves from moving forward. So there's fear, there's resistance, there's I'm not sure that I'm really worthy and capable of being um, bigger, better, more expansive, more powerful, more impactful. But until we get over that hurdle, we're not going to get to the other stuff, right? So like if you really keep feeling stuck and you keep feeling like you're hit, I have the hiccups, I'm sorry. You keep feeling like you're hitting the same thing over and over and over. It's because you're not learning the lesson. (laughs) I don't believe that life is about lessons. I hate that concept that everything's here to trial us and teach us something because that implies that there's an all-knowing, all-grading source, and I don't believe that. But I do believe that life is cyclical, and we experience the same types of patterns over and over. And, you know, life moves in these sort of – um. The way that I view it is like we have these general laws. We have laws of gravity. We have laws of relativity. We have laws of how things interact with each other. We have cause and effect. We have that type of thing. So I believe that we're in these cyclical patterns, but we get to really play with those cyclical patterns based on our belief. And so if there's a lesson, the lesson is you have more power than you think, right? So if you keep hitting the same issue, then you're not, you're not coming at it from a position of power. And the position of power is I am the gift. I have everything I ever need to give more. So what's stopping me from giving more? Lots of things. Fear. I don't know how. I'm not sure if it's okay. What if I'm, you know, judged? What if I'm this? What if I'm not clear? Like there's lots of things that could stand between you and expanding into the most that you could give right now. But don't let your future hopes of what you're able to give through money be one of them, right? Because that is flat out missing the point. It's what you can give now. There are people in your life that you meet every day who you can help right now. And maybe you can help them in ways that you don't understand, right? Like maybe it's the thing that you say. This happened to a client of mine. Maybe it's just the thing that blurts out of your mouth in a conversation that you never intended to be in. Or you were just inspired to talk about an issue and it really helps somebody behind the scenes and you may never know. You know, but if you hold back and you keep thinking, well, I just have to keep plugging away until I can donate a hundred thousand dollars a month to this beautiful cause, like think of all of the opportunity and time and potential impact that you've wasted because you were waiting for money to do the work, not you. Like you are the gift. (laughs) You are the gift, not money. Money is a piece of paper. Money is a representation of value. But the value is you, right? So, hey, guys. um, Unfortunately, I'll have to jump off because I've got to go lead a meditation, and it's like 25 minutes away, so I've got to drive there. But, um, you know, this is really such a key piece. Such a key piece is we keep holding ourselves back, and I'm guilty of it myself, right? That's why I'm able to talk about it is because I'm able to work on it. Hi, Cheryl. I'm so glad you're okay in the fire in your building. Thank goodness. (laughs) Um, you know, I, I know what this is like because this is the journey that I've been on, right? Thinking like, oh, it'll come later. It'll come later. It'll come later. Like, well, when's it going to come? It's going to come the minute I decide that I'm the gift, that I've got everything I need. And to see this so perfectly reflected in a client of mine, um, last week, it was like, all right, there it is. There it is. Because when we see other people do it, it drives us crazy. There are people, you know, in your life who you're like, You've got it going on. What are you so weirded out by? Just get out there and do more, right? (laughs) But yet people hold themselves back. I see this in my nieces, all of whom are, are and my nephews, who are incredibly talented and gifted people. And they're like, oh, no, I can't. I can't. I'm just too bad. I'm too embarrassed. I'm too this. You know, like we see it in people. We're like, oh, my God, get over yourself. Get over yourself and just get out there because you have things to bring to the world. And if you're doing this with money, 
then we've got, you, you're in a little mind trap with yourself. And I want you to snap out of it. Money is not the gift that you're meant to give to the world. They might be connecting people to money. Maybe that's your gift, right? Maybe you know how to connect donors with worthy causes. Maybe you know how to connect um, college kids with sponsorships, you know, like, or um, scholarships, not sponsorships. Um, so maybe money is related to your gift, but you, your money and your gifts are not the same thing, right? And we make money when we decide that we're the gift, that we are the ones who are worthy of expanding into, that we are the ones who are bringing magic into the world, that we are the ones that are making a difference in the world. Money is a side benefit. You can make a whole lot of difference through money. And anybody who doesn't have enough money knows that, right? Because it's the difference between food and not food. It's the difference between shelter and no shelter. Money makes a difference. So I'm not saying you can't make a huge difference. You can, but it's your passion to help that makes the difference, right? It's your commitment. It's your vigor. It's your desire. It's like, it's everything in you that funnels the money there. It's not the money. And we don't have to wait. We just don't have to wait until you're Bill Gates to make a difference, right? Bill Gates made a difference, like, chilling in a garage somewhere. That's the wrong story. That's the wrong person. But you know, wherever he got started, like he wasn't waiting until he was a billionaire to make a difference. He was making a difference, tinkering away at technology, you know? And that's the point. Like you, we still have to expand to our furthest capacity today, just like we do then. Our furthest capacity later might be millions of dollars. And our furthest capacity right now is heart centered connection and presence with people. You know, that that's it. But like, that's the furthest capacity. And if you're not willing to expand into it, then you're not going to expand. You're just not going to expand. And so we have to practice learning how to expand and learning how to be fully the gift in the moment to whatever arises. Okay, I got to go. <laughs> I got to go teach this meditation class. But I hope this landed. I would love to hear what this brings up for you, especially if there's a certain part of your life where you're like, oh my gosh, I was doing that. And I had a client doing this. Thanks, Cheryl. I had a client doing this. I'll share, I'll share a little bit of her story. She was literally saying, I've, I've made a commitment to, to give this amount of money, and I'm failing to meet that commitment. And so I feel like I'm really failing as a person. And I was like, well, what if the reason you're not making that money is because you're missing the point that you are what, what the world is waiting for, not your money, right? So we can change the context, but that's such a good one to prove the point. That like, if we think that God wants something from us, do we think that God wants our money or do we think that God wants us to fully express ourselves? And you can change those words any way you want. But I personally believe that it's that we're fully expressed. Because money is not born. We are, right? <laughs> like, we are born. We are life itself. Money is a tool to trade. We are the life behind it, the life force that invigorates things. And that is where the potential lies. Yes, you are the gift, Cheryl. Holy moly, you are the gift. You are the gift in every possible way. Yeah, and we can't do crapola with our gifts if we're not standing in them. Not because you're like, you don't have to be super aggressively egoic about, egotistical about it, right? Like, it, no, it's just I am what I am. That's all there is to it. So I just kind of have to be like this, right? It's like, those, it's like, oh, well, I guess I just have to be amazing. <laughs> That's just what I was born with. I might as well go for it. You know, we don't have to be embarrassed. Like, you just, you got what you got. And you got to do something with it. Because what a horrible waste. If we don't. All right. Talk to you guys soon. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Mwah.